And we thank you for the blessing that is upon your people. Everyone connected to this service right now, revelation knowledge is gifted them. And we decree by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community. We are so glad to welcome all of you to the service again tonight. And I also want to welcome the Aquaibom State community connected to this service right now by way of Comfort FM, XLFM, Radio Aquaibom, Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service. Hey guys, it's going to be an exciting study of God's word. Call a friend, call a family member, somebody you love. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Social media, like you've always done, help us share the, the messages. Put them on as many pages as 50, 100. Get everybody to hook up to the service. We're going to have an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. We also want to welcome all our campuses around the world for being a part of the service tonight. Glory to God. Hey guys, we're going to have a great time as we study the word and we're glad to welcome all of you to the service tonight. Is there anybody excited to be in church tonight? Well, let's go ahead and give the Lord a praise. Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and your phones and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, uh. All right. Are you ready for the word? Okay. Um, the social media and the television audience, we had a bit of situation, but we're glad we're able to get all of you connected to the service, and it's just going to be exciting. All right. We've been examining the in Christ realities, Brother Paul's revelation of identification. Brother Paul's revelation of identification. And it's been an exciting study. Knowledge is coming and the people of God are growing in the light. Is that true? All right. Second Peter chapter 3 verse number 15. Second Peter chapter 3 verse number 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures to their own destruction. It's interesting that, you know, Brother Peter calls Paul his Roman name. Obviously, Peter must have been writing to a Gentile nation from the first letter. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So it's obvious that just like, you know, uh, Peter was writing in 1 Peter, by 2 Peter he must have been writing to the same crowd. And then calling Paul, Paul, that was his Jewish name. You know, sometimes you hear people say, before he got born again, his name was Saul. When he got born again, he became Paul. No, Paul was his Jewish name. So, I mean, Roman name. Okay? Paul was his Jewish name. Saul was his Roman name. Okay? And, and he was bearing the two names even before he got born again. So it's not like you got born again, then God changed your name and gave you a new name. All right? So, Paul, his Roman name, and Saul of Tarsus, his Jewish name. So he now says, according to the wisdom given unto him. So there's a Sophia from the word Sophizo. Sophia from the word Sophizo. 
the exact words he used for Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. And he says to Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Wise unto salvation. The word wise is the word sophizo. It means to be skillful. Skillful. And you know, there was a way of words. And you know, words explain words. The Old Testament is in words, not in pictures. So when Jesus also taught, he taught as one that had authority. Is the way he uses words to explain those words that stunned the audience. When the Jews said, wow, we have never had any man speak like this. Is the way Jesus used words to explain words that were used in the Old Testament. And that's about what Paul was doing as well. The insight is the way he spoke. And the way he was able to interpret those things that were said and done in the Old Testament writings. Recall how Agrippa said, too much learning makes thou mad. You are beside yourself. Agrippa said to him, you are crazy. That's actually what it means. Again, it is his use of words in explaining the Old Testament. In John chapter 1 verse 18, look at the way John will explain this same thing I'm talking about. John 1 18, no man had seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he had declared him. Okay, that word ezegomai, it means to explain God, to declare exogomai. So therefore John will come up and he will call him the logos of God. John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. That is the passing statement of God. He is not speaking for God, he is speaking as God in man. Jesus was speaking as God in man, or he is speaking as God at the same time as man. The Thanthropos, as God at the same time as man. So Paul therefore will be loyal to this mode of explaining the Old Testament. That's why Jesus is called the teacher of the Old Testament books. He is rabbi. Rabbi means the teacher. He is the one that explains the Old Testament books. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, yesterday we did some little bit of explanation. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, the one we explained as the summative writing, how much is said in a few words so that when you are teaching you use much words because explaining it arguably the same way it was said before it was written so much was said when it was documented a summation was used that carries everything in few words so that when you take the summation you are able to explain it the way it was explained before it was written Imagine, Brother Paul said, he wrote Ephesians in few words. Did you observe? He wrote in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 3. Look at how Brother Paul, I love Brother Paul. How that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote in few words. So he calls his entire letter to the church in Ephesus, few words. How many of you remember, we've done a study in the book of Ephesians. Do you know how many weeks it took us? Yet, Brother Paul calls it few words, like a summation. But when you are explaining it, it will take the same amount of words it took when it was spoken before it was written. Remember, it was spoken so that it can be written, so that it can be spoken. How many of you remember that? All right, so Brother Paul calls his later to the church in Ephesus, how that he wrote to them in few words. You should know that that's a figure of speech. Because Bible tells us, Brother Paul spoke to the church in Ephesus from evening till the next day in the morning. Paul was used to long preaching. 
Paul was used to long preaching. In fact, there's a place he was teaching in the book of Acts where he taught from morning till evening. From morning till evening. So imagine all those things he said and the way he handled them in Berea. Where those things, you know, where those things that brother Paul communicated. But those things will show you that Paul was voluminous in his referencing. He didn't just speak casually. He brought into his communication a lot of scriptures. Look at the way he taught in Acts chapter 13. He made voluminous explanation. You know, and a few other preachings like the one of Stephen. You know, brother Stephen in Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 and 7. That was a long teaching. In fact, Stephen went from Genesis in, onto Malachi. He went through the entire scriptures in his explanation of his message in Acts chapter 6 and 7. Like when you hear in Acts chapter 5, Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. It's not like he was brief. No. If you look at Acts chapter 2 and see how they preach, they were quoting scriptures properly. In Acts chapter 13, you will also see how that Christ is explained, listen carefully, historically, historically, hermeneutically, and practically. Historically, hermeneutically, and practically. That's how he is taught and preached. So Paul uses the same mode of writing by saying how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now that means according to several scriptures. How he was buried according to several scriptures of which he can give you hundreds of scriptures. And now he rose again according to several scriptures. Alright? Singular statement but pregnant with so much details. So when you see a teacher of the word today and he just wants to talk about love and you're writing and using 200 texts and you're wondering that even the book to Romans was just about 10 to 12 pages. And yet the man is writing just on love walk, 200 pages. Why is he writing 200 pages? Why? Because he is using a keruso or the kerugma of the written form. Keruso or kerugma of the written form. The kerugma is always broader, much more detailed. So Paul in Romans 16 talks about how he handled the Old Testament books. Let's look at how Paul explained his handling of the Old Testament books. Romans chapter 16 verse 25. Romans 16 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world begun. The preaching of Jesus Christ is the word kerugma. The kerugma, that is the announcement by speaking of Jesus Christ. Now kerugma is spelled as K-E-R-U-G-M-A. Kerugma. Alright, now. So, the announcement by speaking of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 26 of the same chapter. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. We will look at that word obedience of faith within the week. Jesus risen from the dead. That is my gospel. That's what Paul was saying. Jesus risen from the dead. That is my gospel. Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. Let's see brother Paul still. Romans 1 1 to 4. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, 
called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. I like his way with words. Separated unto the gospel of God which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. Which he had promised afore by the prophets in the holy scriptures. Look at verse 3. Concerning. So the gospel is concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh incarnation look at the next verse and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness how? by the resurrection from the dead. So he puts incarnation and resurrection together to complete the story of how he was born, how he died, how he was buried, how he rose again within four verses. He has finished summarizing the entire Bible. That was his way with words. Now, where did he get that from? Where did Paul get that from? Well, he didn't get that from the Old Testament. He got that from the eyewitness accounts. He got that from the eyewitness. Those who saw the fulfillment of that scripture. So when he spoke about that revelation of the resurrection of Jesus, he meant I didn't see it physically. But I saw the resurrection by revelation from scripture. How that he rose from the dead. Then in Romans chapter 1 verse 14, um, yeah, verse 4, look at verse 4, sorry, verse 4. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Note verse 3, made by of the seed of David. Verse 4, declared, the word horizo, declared, marked out. The son of God with power marked out. This is the synergy in Paul's writings with the four gospels. He sings it together. Four gospels, verse 3. Put up verse 3 of that Romans 1 for me. That is the four gospels. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Four gospels. Four gospels. Then the greater truth of Christ, the spirit of truth in the epistles. And that is verse 4 and 5. Look at it, verse 4 and 5. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Observe, by whom, because of this, we now have received grace which is apostleship. That and it TKS rule. Grace, which is apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Are you still here? So that is why we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience of all nations. So when we know that they hardly quoted Jesus, it's not because the apostles didn't quote Jesus. It's because they explained him. They didn't quote him verbatim, but they explained. There was more verbiage, there was more vocabulary. They explained him. They hardly had to quote him, but all his words are found in their letters. And in Paul's letters. Did Paul call the blessed one, the one that is persecuted blessed in his letters? Yes. Did he call the poor blessed? Yes, he called them blessed in his letters. You know, could you found the sermon on the mounts in the writings of Paul? From even the things we have done? Yes. So it's a whole lot of Sophia. A whole lot of explanation. He had reason to quote some things that Jesus said. You know, for example, the, the, the favorite Passover scriptures. I have received of the Lord Jesus how that in that night when he was betrayed, he took bread. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 24, and 25. 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 24, and 25. Now, this was written when the book of Luke was not written. 
Paul wrote the book of Corinthians before the book of Luke was written. You are not listening. Paul wrote the book of Corinthians before the book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, and John were written. And observe the way he spoke. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Now, so where did he get it from? Paul got it from the Keruso. He got it from the Kerugma. These were the things. That means, in the sermons of the apostles, they referenced Jesus orally when they were teaching. Or when they were speaking. And brother Paul gathered all of this from their kerugma. So when he was writing, he wrote authoritatively, both from the eyewitnesses and from the scriptures. Are we still in the building? In Acts 20, 35, when brother Paul will say, remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That means he was used to them in the speakings of the eyewitness. Now, but how come they are not in his epistles loud and strong? Because, don't forget, the epistles will be the explanation, the revelation of the scriptures. The explanation of the mystery. So could Paul have taught the epistles without the four gospels? Yes. He taught the epistles without the four gospels. How did he do that? Old Testament and eyewitness account. Am I communicating at all? Am I communicating at all? But could Paul have taught without the incarnation of Christ and without the resurrection? No, what will he be teaching? He wouldn't have been teaching anything. So, the Sophia definitely is advanced. It's advanced. But it is not contrary to the four Gospels. It's advanced. But it's not contrary to the four Gospels. So, when you find John say something like 1 John 3.16. Pay attention. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. When John speaks like that, John is teaching from John 15, 12. Observe John 15, 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. 13. Next verse. Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. So look at it, they sound alike because John taught first John from the gospel of John. So they taught Christ in this way. Why? Were they able to know reference his were they able to now reference his words in such clarity and such Sophia? Why were they able to do that? Because in Luke 24, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So from the time their understanding was opened, their understanding remained opened. Based on that, they could explain the scriptures the way Jesus taught it. They could explain the scriptures the way the Old Testament people taught it. Observe the word Open he their understanding is the word dinogio. That is, their eyes were opened so now they could handle the books. Now, if you had the pleasure of being there when Jesus taught, the moment your mind is opened, you will teach how he taught and the way he taught. But of course, because of the time we're in, the day of the church. Today is the day of the church. You will teach with much more clarity and again by the spirit of Christ. So there's a synergy in Paul's writings 
and in Jesus' words. Are we still in the building? So now you could read the four gospels well, like you are reading the epistles. How many of you have observed, when you look at the four gospels now, it's a lot clearer now than it was before. Because when you understand, you know, uh, when you understand these details, then the whole Bible comes together as one book. Please, this is very important. In this series, we are still going to go to the Old Testament. And we will see Paul and Moses, how their communication was in tandem. Just like we're looking at Paul and Jesus. Are you still in the building? We will look at Paul and Moses. And we're only doing Paul and Jesus for now, but in the days to come, we'll look at Paul and Moses. And also, we will look at Paul and the prophets in the years to come. You didn't hear that. We will look at Paul and the prophets. How that all of scripture agrees together as consistency of theology. There's no contradiction anywhere. But as the years go by, not, not now. We're not going to look at that now. But at least we'll look at Paul and Moses before this series is over. So that you see that the scriptures are a single document. Very single. Now the question will be, did Paul use Genesis... Huh? Did Jesus use Genesis? What is the most important part of Moses' writings? Huh? Genesis 1, 2. That's the most important. Doctrine. That is the framework for doctrine. Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. That's where you get Moses' concept from. That is where you find Moses' didache. So we need to investigate a few things in continuation of what we were teaching yesterday. Are you still in the building? John chapter 3, verse number 3. <clears throat> John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto, the, unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Did we say the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are the same? It is the kingdom of God because it is of God. It is the kingdom of heaven because the kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven. It's the same thing. They are not two different things. Alright? So except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Look at verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, that is of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So question, how do you enter the kingdom of heaven? Did you see what I just did? He cannot enter the kingdom of God. So my question, how does a man enter the kingdom of heaven? Huh? Can I hear you louder for the radio? Being born of the spirit. So when you're born of the spirit, where do you enter? The kingdom of who? Heaven. Or? Because the kingdom of God? Exactly. So once a man is born again, where is his residence? So is he heaven at last or heaven at first? Very good. Now, <clears throat> I said all of that because of what I'm about to say now. Yesterday we established that Paul's heaven is Paul's pneumaticus. Huh? We said the reason why Paul didn't use heaven much is because he changed the, 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 the term. So instead of heaven, what did brother Paul use more? Spiritual, pneumaticus. Now, please pay attention. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly in Christ. Pneumaticus heulegetis. I gave you that in the second service. Blessedness of the spirit. This is where you have you foreigners in Christ. The spirit in the heavenlies. The spirit in the euphoranius. He expects you to see 
that he uses them interchangeably. So, question. Is Jesus' kingdom in the spirit? Yes. Is Jesus' kingdom heaven in the spirit? Is Jesus' heaven in the spirit or a planet? Alright. So when we say the kingdom of heaven, what are we talking about? Spirituals. Pneumaticus. It's not literal. It's not physical. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is spiritual. So the kingdom of God is in the spirit. You know, many years ago, it is just now something is flashing my mind. Just now. Many years ago, the Archbishop Benson Idahosa was preaching in Atlanta, Georgia for Bishop L. Pork. I think I still have that message in the house. So our bishop was preaching. Then at a point he stopped and he said, the kingdom of God is in the spirit. The kingdom of heaven is in the spirit. Then he said, the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of spirit. Our bishop, this is like maybe 25, 30 years ago. I mean many, many years ago. Then he now said to them, I may not be able to get into the details, but one day you will understand. Then he entered another, another aspect of teaching. Now, many years later, I'm teaching and I'm remembering that. Because even me at that time when I heard him, it didn't make sense. But if it had made sense to me then, I would have understood, stood far back then, that heaven is not a planet. Because what the archbishop was simply doing that evening was to make people see that heaven is not a planet, it's a spirit realm. I mean, many years ago. I just remembered it right now. I still have the message somewhere in my house on a, on a DVD. You know DVD? DVD. You know DVD? Somebody in my house prayed and said, Father, I want to go to America where I will not use DVD. <laughs> and God answered her prayer. So, heaven is a kingdom of God where? Can I hear you louder? So, the things of the spirit are the heavenly things in the teaching of Jesus. The things of the spirit are the heavenly. So when Jesus is teaching spirit, 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 what is he talking about? Heaven, heaven, heaven. So Paul's euphoreneus is Paul's pneumaticus, right? Huh? Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 5. That was where we stopped yesterday. Chapter 5 verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands. Where is it? Eternal. Where is eternal? In the heavens. Because if it was material, it would not be eternal. But the reason why it is, mat it is eternal is because it is not material. There's nothing material that is eternal. I don't know if I'm talking. There's nothing material that is eternal. So if heaven were to be a physical planet where we will go, it means it has expiry date because matter doesn't last forever. That's why your shoe cannot last forever. No matter how economical you are in using the shoe, even on its own, it will grow old. There's a shoe I had, very good shoe, but I bought it for a long time. I wore it like twice and then I kept it in my wardrobe and I forgot it. After like six, seven years, I remember that shoe. So I took the shoe and wore it. As I was walking, the sole of the shoe left me. On its own, it depreciated in value. Not by reason of use, but by reason of age. That is the limitation of matter. Expensive shoe is not mode in Japan. You know, there is made in Japan and there is mode in Japan. Please, whenever you buy shoes or you're buying shoes, make sure it is not mode in. Make sure it is made in. 
Because mode in is not made in. You will understand. <laughs> Are we in the building? Matter never lasts. So that is why you will see Paul in his, in his Sophia using eternal in the Euphoranios. Because only the Euphoranios can carry eternal things. Matter cannot carry eternal things. The aircraft, the aircraft, the material used in the construction of planes are materials that are not supposed to fail. That's why the engine is Rolls Royce. The aircraft engines. Because they come up with materials that can last. Because you cannot stop playing in the sky for mechanic to adjust. You understand? You're flying there. You say, ah, the plane is having noise. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will park here for a few minutes. The mechanic will go out and fix it. You can't stop a plane. So whatever they put in a plane, they have to guarantee its durability. Yet, because it is matter, it still crashes. Because there's nothing matter produces that can last forever. So that's why heaven is not a material planet. It's an immaterial. That's why the word eternal. Where? In the heavens. Where are the heavens? Immaterial. Spiritual. Pneumaticus. I'm teaching good tonight. Now, stay with me. Next verse. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Again, I just remembered something. That is why if you have a shoe you are not using now, and you see a brother need the shoe, give him. So that you won't keep it for long, and the day you wear it, the soul will leave you. You can imagine going with shoes suddenly, you wonder why your leg is flat on the ground. Then you look back, the soul is sitting there. Anything you are not using now, look for people that need it, give them to use it. Your life doesn't depend on it. Because the more you are keeping it, the more it's depreciating in value. Meanwhile, there's somebody who needs it. See, I hear you. Don't hold things like this. Don't hold things like your life. Mm -mm. There is seed that scattered and yet increase it. I'm talking to some people now because there are some things you need to give out in your house and you've got to go and gather them. Look for people who need them and share with them. Sister, you have increased in size. Your cloth can no more fit you. Take that cloth. I don't care how much you bought it. Look for somebody that it will fit. Give the person to wear and enjoy the glory of watching your cloth on somebody else. Or you have reduced in size. The cloth is wearing you now. Look for somebody that is still maintaining that size. I'm teaching good tonight. Don't keep things. Don't hold on to things. Your life doesn't depend on it. I'm teaching good here. Say with me, my life doesn't depend on it. Now, so he calls the glorified body eternal in the heavens. He calls it that which will swallow mortality. He calls the glorified body life. Life. In that second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 4. Verse 4. Give me verse 4. For we, we that are in this tabernacle do groan. Being burdened. Not for that we will be unclothed. But clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. Look at verse 5. Oh glory to God. Now he that hath wrought us for this self same thing is God who also had given unto us the earnest, the guarantee, the down payment, the deposit of the spirit. Everything he has said here is guaranteed by the spirit. Everything I said here is in the spirit. Look at verse 6. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Next verse. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now, this, this verse has been used for many things that it does not pertain to. 
We walk by faith, not by sight. It's within the context of our bodies that will be changed. So we're walking by faith, expecting the change, not by sight, looking at this physical body. But that scripture has been used for all kinds of things. Next verse. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Are you still here? Now, present with the Lord, dear, is present with the Lord. That is, we are present with the Lord now. But in this context, is wearing the other body. Where we see him, he sees us. And our interaction is in perfection. Without the hindrance of mortality. Am I communicating? When he says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I leave the body, I will be with Christ. With Christ is not I transfer myself to another place. It's not like to be absent from the body, I transfer myself to another place. No. To be with Christ, he is talking about the physical body. Now see this. So the spirit becomes the witness of that. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. That he might feel all things. Ay, ay, ay. That he might. What was the heavens? He said the heavens is the church. That he might feel all things. He had mentioned the heavens. Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Same context. Ephesians 1, 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power pay attention, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand where? In the heavenlies. Next verse. Far above all principality, power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and had put all things where? Under his feet and gave him to be what? The head over what? All things to who? The church. So he is the head over all things to the church. That means he is the head over all things to the church. Now watch. Which is his body? The fullness of him eh, that filleth what? All in all. So the heavenly place is in the church. The church is in Christ. The heavenly place is in the church. The church is in Christ. In Christ means in the believer. In the believer, in Christ means in the spirit. Can I go over it again? The heavenly place is in the church. In the church means in Christ. In Christ means in the believer. In the believer means in the spirit. So the things of the spirit are they heavenly? Church, things of the spirit are they heavenly? Yes, they are euphoranious. And they are away from the earth. Are they away from the earth? Things of the spirit, are they away from the earth? Where are they? They are within the earth. Are they earthly? No. Are they in the earth? So the heavenly is where? In the earth, but it is not of the earth. Are we together here? Right. So heaven and earth, therefore becomes a shorthand of where man is in two worlds. A shorthand 
of where man is in two worlds. So 1 Corinthians 15.45 1 Corinthians 15.45 And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Life-giving spirit. The last Adam is a life-giving spirit. You're not seeing this. The last Adam is a life-giving spirit. You're not seeing this. I want to repeat. Who is the last Adam? Jesus. So Jesus is a life-giving spirit. So Jesus is the spirit of life. He is a life-giving spirit. It's the same thing Paul was talking about in Romans 8, 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. How? By his spirit that dwelleth in you. Which spirit? The last Adam. Who is the last Adam? Life giving spirit. So what is in you now? Life giving spirit. Who is life giving spirit? Christ. Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead will quicken. That quickening is resurrection. He will make alive your mortal bodies. He will make alive your mortal bodies. Both as spirit. Look at Philippians 3.20. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. Where? In heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. Who shall change our vile body. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our behavior, who we are, our commonwealth is in heaven all by the spirit. So, we, so can we develop our own hermeneutics and say therefore heaven will be the control tower of the earth? Huh? So heaven is like the control tower of a place where you have, for example, like a university. You know the control tower of a university is the Senate building. Huh? The Senate building. If they say you are invited to appear before the Senate, will you sleep? Huh? Because you know that in that place, ye is ye, nay is nay. Rusticated is rusticated. <laughs> okay so that's the control tower of a university community we can call the senate building a, the highest place so the use of heaven therefore will be higher than the material heaven is in the world but a higher place within the material world heaven is that unseen but which can be seen in man's action. Heaven is that unseen reality that can be seen in man's action. Just like the spirit is here on earth and it is not. It is here but it is not. Because you can't see it. Heaven can be described as what is happening in the earth, but it is not physical. Heaven is happening on the earth, but it is not physical. And we can see heaven in the behavior of a born again man. In the words of Jesus and the words of the apostles, that's how they explained it. 
And obviously we said how Moses uses it. The light, the darkness. Light and darkness refers to the heavenly things. So you can always know which heaven by the things of the heaven. For example, Ephesians 6.12 spiritual wickedness that is not in the spirit of God spiritual wickedness where do we get spiritual wickedness from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh where in the children of disobedience. So heaven on earth therefore. Becomes a shorthand. Or a concept. Of saying. A man functions by the spirit in the earth. A man functions. That is the concept of heaven and earth. A man functions by the spirit. On earth. A man in two worlds. So it is used as an operational word. What is done. So when he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. It cannot be kingdom of earth. It has to be kingdom of heaven. So whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven or should be bound in heaven because heaven is where the authority should be. So when you are binding, you are in heaven binding and it's taking effect on the earth because heaven is the control tower of the earth. The invisible controls the visible because the visible came out of the invisible. You are not hearing me. The invisible controls the visible because the visible came out of the invisible. God is invisible and God created nature. God created matter. So out of the invisible came the visible. That's why the visible is temporal. The invisible is eternal. Heaven and earth. The visible and the invisible. Am I teaching good? Stay with me. So whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. In other words, whatever you should do on earth should be done by the spirit. That's why you never lose in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you never lose. Your way to victory is to walk in the spirit because the spirit controls the natural. You will never lose. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty how? Through God, spirit. To the pulling down of strongholds. That is how we bind things on earth. Heaven is where we rule. Heaven is where we reign. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they reign in this life. How do they reign in this life? From heaven. We reign from heaven. We reign in the spirit of truth. The allos paracletos or the spirit of the son or the spirit which is of God. So in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14, therefore, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. Of whom the whole family were in heaven and earth is named. Heaven and earth therefore refers to us in two worlds. Family in heaven and family on earth. The same family. Named. So we are on earth visible. And we are also in heaven invisible. 
man in two worlds. So there comes a shorthand of saying man in two worlds. Higher than the earth in the same sphere. That's the shorthand. Heaven and earth. Man in two worlds. Higher than the earth. Heaven in the same sphere. So when Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is here, he meant, look away from what you can see. There is more than what the eyes can see. There's more to material things. It is called kingdom. You know, one day Jesus cast out demons. <laughs> he was accused of the ill zebub. He said the kingdom cannot be divided against itself. And if I... If I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom has arrived. The reign, the rule of the invisible over the visible has taken effect when men are casting out demons. Because Satan cannot cast out himself. So if a man is casting out demons, that man must have been of the heavens. The kingdom has come. If I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, Shatobala, then the kingdom has come among you. So take note of this. The spirit of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has arrived. The spirit of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has arrived. In other words, he's saying to us that he is the personalized kingdom of God. Jesus is the personalized kingdom of God. He, Jesus, becomes that person. The kingdom is here. And that kingdom, he says... How do you get into that kingdom? Huh? By being born of the spirit. So if you are born of the spirit, where do spirits stay? In the spirit, which is in heaven, using Moses' language. We must always look at how they use phrases and we must look at it properly. If you look at what is called the believer's authority, Every time you read about the believer's authority in the scripture, it is always related to the preaching of the gospel. Every time. It's not for personal benefit. It is always for the gospel. Keep that somewhere. So when you read in, jo in Luke chapter 3 verse 21, put it up. Let's read together. Everybody want to go. Now, when all the people were baptized, and it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying. The heaven was opened. Can we say the unseen was seen? Yes. It doesn't mean they looked up and the sky opened. It means they saw into the unseen. Look at verse 22. And the Holy Ghost... Did you see, honey? When the heavens opened, the next thing they saw was the spirit. Because heaven is the kingdom of the spirit. The domain, the reign. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven. Which said. So they saw into the unseen. And they heard from the unseen. They didn't hear from a planet. How come the voice from heaven and only them had it? I thought if your voice is coming from heaven, a planet, the whole world should hear it. You know, it's Michael Bush that was saying this to me, honey. That he has always wondered when he started following the teaching of heaven. That he has always wondered when they used to teach them back in the days that the trumpet of that the angel of the Lord shall stand with the trumpet and blow. So he was wondering whether how will the trumpet sound that the whole world will hear at once? 
Have you ever thought of that? God spoke from heaven and only one man heard. It's because he's speaking from right here but in a realm that is not earthly. So instead of saying a realm, Moses now gave it a term, heaven. To differentiate earth from the invisible. Earth visible, heaven invisible. Is it getting clear? Now, look at Matthew 17, 5. Where they heard the voice. Matthew 17, 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. This is Peter, James, and John. Then Peter was now going to explain what happened that day. Because he was there. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.18 This voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him, where? In the holy mount. He said we heard the voice from heaven. And they heard the voice on a mountain here on earth. So when you go to Acts chapter 2, it is now clear to you that Acts chapter 1 verse 11 first, Acts 1, 11 and 12, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Eee. As you see him go into heaven. Question, when he was taken, did he, did it mean that he left the earth? Eh? Eh? Be confident. No or yes? No. But they were looking up. And an angel who didn't know much, an angel who didn't know much, gave them a doctrinal position that many people still believe today. Remember, it was an angel that spoke. And angels don't know much because they are still learning from us. And many people's doctrine is from what that angel who doesn't know much said. And the doctrine doesn't have a corroboration in the epistles. The angel said, the same way you see him go, he shall come. So the folks are looking in the sky. And all that just happened was that Christ was not physically felt again. Because the immaterial body can disappear. And it can reappear. Remember, he was already wearing the immaterial body. So he could disappear and reappear because matter doesn't hold him. So I'm sure they were looking at Jesus and he disappeared. And an angel said, he's gone, he will come back. So now people are looking in the sky. And then Jesus said, come. The kingdom of heaven does not come by observation. Stop looking here and there. It's inside you. Remember, nobody has gone to heaven. Only Jesus. So, if Jesus tells you that heaven is inside you, you shouldn't be looking elsewhere. I'm teaching good. Jesus already told you. It doesn't come by observation. Do you know that Jesus said, if they tell you that, look there, Christ is there. Look there, Christ is there. He said they are false prophets. He said, Christ is not there. Christ is not there. Christ is in you. I'm teaching God. I'm almost through, man. The devil didn't want you to hear this. That's why I'm pushing it. You must hear it well. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Question. While the angel was talking to these disciples. Was Christ in them? Eh? 
eh? <laughs> was Christ in them? This is Acts chapter 1. Eh? Eh? This is Acts chapter 1. Okay, wait. <laughs> By Acts chapter 1, were they believers? By Acts chapter 1, were they born again? By Acts chapter 1, has Jesus risen from the dead? So, the people that the angel was asking to be looking up, was Christ in them? So, that means when they saw him disappear, where did he disappear to? He disappeared into them where he lives. He did not disappear into the clouds. Remember when he rose from the dead, he said, I am with you unto the end. So if he's with them, how will he be gone? Into heaven. In the same manner he has disappeared in, he will reappear. It is called the manifestation of the sons of God. If you are catching a shout, I hear, I hear. Yeah, that's what we are talking about. Sit down, let me close this service. Because our heaven was not geographical. Our heaven is in man. So he moved away from their physical sight. So they could relate with him in reality in the spirit which is in heaven. He left their senses to live in their spirit so they can walk in the spirit. In the reality of his finished work. Teaching good. So this is why we mustn't get wrong. The outpouring of the spirit. When he says, I send the promise of my father upon you as though he left the earth. Luke 24, 49, write down for further study. Or when Peter was going to describe him in Acts 3, 2, 33. Give me Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, which he had shed forth this, which you now see and hear. Radio audience, any moment from now, you may be signed up, but you will get the rebroadcast of everything tomorrow on other radio stations. Radio Aquibom, XLFM, Passion FM, Inspiration, in case... You don't get the conclusion of what I'm teaching. Now, heaven right here in the earth. What did the angel mean? Because they must have heard some things here and there. You will see how he will come again in the same manner. So what did they mean by he will come again in the same manner? Remember, the angels are not in position to tell us. Eh? the angels were not assigned to preach the gospel it is men that preach the gospel I'm teaching good here so the persons who will tell us have been given the grace to teach the things Jesus said and Paul did Romans 8 18 to 23 for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. Next verse. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and traveleth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, 
waiting for the adoption to which the redemption of our bodies. So the way we, you see him, he says you will see him in the same manner. That means Jesus will be seen physically in this earth with flesh and blood. The way you see him go, you were looking at him physically and he disappeared. You will see him again with flesh and blood in the same manner, the appearance, the parousia. Now, what the angels did not know is that he will be seen in his church. Is the head part of the body or the head is on his own? Who is the head? Who is the body? So where will the head be seen? Together with the church. That is why we will appear with him. Look at it. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Next verse. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Observe, observe. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, he is not, he is not coming, he is appearing. There are two different things. So what we call second coming is actually appearance. Are we teaching here? It's not like Jesus is going to be traveling from somewhere to come. No. It's an appearance. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Next verse. Let's read the next verse together everybody. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. John says it differently but the same thing. Yet appear is the word fenoru in the Greek. That is we are not yet naked. There are things still covering us. That's exactly what the angels should have said. We will see Jesus exactly like the believer. He will be seen flesh and blood through the church. Paul calls it, this vile body will be changed into incorruptible body. That is the body of Jesus today in the earth. The earth now refers to this physical body and its operations. The heaven now refers to the immaterial body and its operations. So our heaven is in our earth. The spirit within the flesh. Our heaven is in our earth. The spirit within the flesh. When we walk in the spirit, we are looking into heaven. When we walk in the spirit, we are living in heaven. Oh, oh, oh. God's heaven is in the spirit. Jesus meant it when he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Oikia Mone. Words that refer to identification. Where he is, that's where I am. In that day you shall know that I in my father I, my father in me, I in you. So the use of heaven has to be contextual. Just like Pneumaticus explains the spirit, Euphorenius explains heaven. Now you know what we're teaching here? So somebody is not in service tonight may not be in service tomorrow, may not be in service on Wednesday, then he will come on Sunday, next Sunday, 
and say, Papa, I didn't understand Saturday preaching. Can you explain? How you want to start? Huh? How do you start? Even if you summarize, you will not understand at all. <laughs> Some people just stay away from church. And they show up when they like. Then they now say, are you now saying yes? I am now saying, you want what to say? <laughs> See how all of you are sitting here, taking notes. Somebody is at home eating. Then on Sunday, they say, excuse me, can you now, can you now say? Yes, I am now saying. See your face. <laughs> when we are laboring, labor, eh? When we are laboring, you know, come. Then I say we should summarize. <laughs> we will label. Then you say we should summarize. Is that a serious person? It's a question. Is that a serious person? So what we labor to understand, you want to understand by summary. Dr. Damina, are you now saying? Yes, I am now saying. And so what? You won't beat me. <laughs> when I see on serious people, I know. Say, uh, Dr. Damina, what's the meaning of heaven? It means your mother's house. <laughs> Leave them, Joe. So when the writer of Hebrews spoke about Jesus going into heaven, except you're a lazy reader, you ought to see that the heavenly is referring to our hearts. Our hearts. Look at it, Hebrews 12, 20 to 23. Hebrews 12, 20 to 23. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Next verse. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Next verse. But you are come. You are come. You are come. Unto Mount Zion. What is Mount Zion? The city of the living God. Where is the city of the living God? The heavenly Jerusalem. Where is the heavenly Jerusalem? Innumerable company of angels are there. Where is that? To the general assembly. Where is the general assembly? The church. So where is the heavenly Jerusalem? The church. The heavenly Jerusalem is the church of the firstborn, which are written where? In heaven. And to God, the judge of all. And to the spirits. Where are the spirits of just men made perfect? In heaven. Who are those just men? Who are those perfected men? Where is their spirit? In heaven, the kingdom of spirits. We are come. That's where we are now. It's not Zion at last. We are come now. Honey, I don't understand how some churches call themselves Mount Zion Lighthouse and they are preaching heaven at last. You say your church is Mount Zion. That is anybody that comes to your church has arrived Zion. He's already in heaven. And then now you are telling those that have arrived Zion, heaven at last. You are not understanding. Did I say anything? This is the summation of what we have been saying. And in case you want to travel, he said it's not a travel. It is euphoriaous, heavenly. Then he says, this heavenly is innumerable company of angels. He calls it general assembly. He calls it the church of the firstborn in heaven. So everything he was saying, he now calls it the spirits of the just man. So heaven is the spirit of just man. Heaven is the names written in the book of life. From chapter 1 till verse chapter 12 of Hebrews, when he's done talking about this heaven, he now talked about the training of the kingdom. That in the kingdom we are raised up as sons. He now talks about the heavenly life. He now tells you, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. 
He talks about submission, accountability. He talks about sacrifice of praise. All of those are heavenly conducts. So he now says he will perfect us. So we now handle earthly things with heavenly realities. Because heaven is now in the spirit. Where is heaven? You must always follow the writers through. So again, is Brother Paul's pneumaticus, Brother Paul's euphoranius, huh? Huh? So Jesus' pneuma is Moses' ruach. Which is Brother Paul's? Huh? Wait. Moses' is ruach is Jesus' is what? Numa is Brother Paul's apodexis. So Moses' is ruach is Jesus' is numa aletia, which is Brother Paul's apodexis. And all of them are saying the same thing. So is Moses' spirit, Jesus' spirit, Paul's spirit. So is Paul's spirit, Jesus' is heaven? Huh? Very good. Very good. So now, we can understand that the Old Testament, the apostles had a grasp, And they could now relate with Moses' Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, which is very important in Christian doctrine. Listen carefully as I close. His life is his light. His light shines in darkness. His light shines in darkness. Is his heaven on earth. So that will lead into a world of seeing that God has always spoken about his salvation from Genesis. So the spirit of truth guides us into all the truth. And that's exactly what the Pauline letters were about. Paul penned down the words of Moses in clarity, the words of the prophets in clarity. So just like Jesus taught, Paul therefore will be an advancement of the things Jesus said. Not in any way addition, not in any way a correction, not in any way a contradiction, not addition, not correction, not contradiction, but a furtherance, an advanced explanation of what Jesus said and of what Jesus taught. An advanced explanation. Which now brings the, the believer to a place of what we call epignosis. Accurate, precise, revealed knowledge. That the communication of your faith may become how? Effectual. How? By the acknowledging of every good thing that is where? In. Where are all the good things? In. In the believer. Who is in Christ. The heaven of God. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Get on your feet as all of God in this house. Praise God. Jeku malata nagas. Bebro dozo bele de bobosh. Egele ne moso toliana. Lebro zakala naba. We are going to take five minutes to just give thanks. For this revelation. For this understanding. Just begin to give him thanks for this revelation. For this understanding. And any area of this teaching you didn't understand, just pray in the spirit for a few seconds. Let's just pray together, everybody. Lebro jakala na mambro da gongolo da bozekele da bobra da bolo da bonda gele na manaka tonege. Mambro da zobre gede gele na mambo jekele na maha. Go ahead, let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes. Begin to thank him for these realities. Begin to thank him for revelation knowledge. Begin to thank him that the eyes of your understanding are being enlightened. Begin to thank him that the light is shining in your heart. Begin to thank him that your mind is being illuminated. 
Riko to bilana mamane bolo bolobo jekele de bobo rogodo boze kelia. Ega boroko to bilina mano mono gilana mana mozoto lodo boroko to balana mana koto liana maha. Ege bo jekele de mombro da bobo rodo boli da baba baraka to de kelina mana mano lobo 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 zebelina mana gado golo dobo. Ega baro to belida baba babro da bolo da babre ne ketele ne mo sakala na ma. Ege bo jakola na mambro da bola da babra gada baraka to belene mana. Ega baraka to la labro da boze belene mambro da babaraka to le de baba baraka da balada. Glory to God. I like you to grab somebody and pray for the person. Make proclamations over the person. Declare concerning his health. Declare concerning his understanding and walking in these realities. Let's pray for one another. Go ahead. Let's pray together for one another. Speak to his health. You'll be fat and flourishing. You'll be healthy and strong. All your organs are revitalized. You are in robust health. Sickness and disease does not operate in your territory. The healing power of God is at work in your body, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your bone, your blood, your veins, your artery, your, your, your entire systems, respiratory system, digestive system, nervous system. All the systems in your body are healthy and strong. The Lord that he lets you lives in your body. Every member of your body responds to the healing power of God. Sickness and disease cannot hide in your body. You are strong. You live long. You fulfill the purpose of God for your life. I call your body a vehicle of the kingdom. I declare your body an instrument of, of the gospel. Every symptom flushed out. Every symptom flushed out. No oppression, no depression, no harassment. Your memory is sharp. No memory loss. Your memory is sharp. Your brain cells are refreshed. Your blood is purified. You walk in the spirit. You, you walk in these realities. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ego bajoko lodo bobo boroko tobele mano hota. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out in your life, in your body. Is rooted out. The healing power of God is at work in your body. You're favored by God. You're favored by God. Zibo rokoto shagaya. You walk in the spirit. The revelation of this word grows big in your heart. Your mind receives light. The eyes of your understanding are flooded with light. Strengthened with might. By the spirit in the inner man. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. You are rooted and grounded in love. You are kept by the power of God. You are preserved by Christ. You are far from oppression. No weapon formed against you prospers. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now lift your hands and begin to give him praise. Begin to thank God for health. Begin to thank God for increasing revelation. Begin to thank God for strength. Nekorotobosakala namahata. Lekorotobosakala namamash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now say with me very loud. The Lord is my shepherd. I do not lack anything. All my needs are supplied right now. According to his riches in glory. Right now. I lack nothing. I have sufficiency. 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 Now say it very loud. Sufficiency is mine. 
right now in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and give him a shout. Glory! Celebrate sufficiency. Celebrate sufficiency. I lack nothing. I have everything. I am blessed in all things. I am blessed in all ways. I am blessed in all things. Glory to God. Somebody shout a powerful amen. Are you blessed tonight? Get a good offering. Let's give us your honor Christ. Amen. Today the spirit changed the whole plan, right? And it's a blessing. It's a... Amen. We are live again at 9 o'clock, 9 to 10 on direction, 10 to 11 on um, prayer. Tomorrow morning, 5 to 6, we are live. And then tomorrow evening, we are back quarter to 6 as we keep exploring the riches of his grace. Amen. Those online, you have your offerings. You can also give the banking details are there scrolling online. Father, thank you for the privilege to give. We honor and worship you with our offerings and we're excited about every opportunity to make a difference in the gospel through our finances. We give you praise for answered prayer in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Amen. Glory to God. All right, we love you guys. Good night. Be blessed. Enjoy Christ. You can drop your offerings anywhere around the pulpit and we connect we at night. We trust nine. that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.